In today's show, we're going to talk about the Power App Search function. We're going to look at how to build your own search. We're going to talk about what is that blue triangle is you keep building. We're going to talk about some of the little gotchas, things to look out for when you're using search, including the lookup column with SharePoint. And then finally, we're going to end with why doesn't SharePoint search work when you build an app using the SharePoint list template. But first, here's our intro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras, those guys. And today's show is all about the search function in Power Apps. We're gonna look at that little guy, try and break down how he works, why he works, when you would use him, when you wouldn't. And we're gonna do that through some different demonstrations. We're gonna talk about some of the gotchas, right? There's a few things that are weird about search. And then finally at the end, we'll kind of show you how to fix those SharePoint lists because we know that if you build a SharePoint list out of the box, it doesn't, uh, search doesn't work. But what's even weirder is it doesn't actually use search. So we'll talk about that and uh, set up, set ourselves up for the next video. All right, so let's just dive right in. So we'll jump over here to my desktop and let's create ourselves an app, right? So I'm just gonna do a new uh, tablet layout. Okay, give this a little bit of space. We'll make this bigger. And so there we got a blank one. And the first thing we need to do is get a little data on the screen. So we'll insert a gallery. And the reason I choose a gallery here is because typically speaking, that's what you're gonna do I uh, use this search type of thinking with the most. Not always, but it's usually what I use. So I'm gonna choose my SharePoint list, and then we'll choose a SharePoint site, and then we'll choose employee details. I'm gonna say connect. Okay, so that gives us um, that. We'll change the view real quick to title, subtitle, and body, why not? And then we'll change this title column from compliance to title. All right, that's good enough. That gives us some data to work with. I'm gonna grab the whole thing though real quick, and we're gonna pull it down. Okay, so to add search to this, the first thing most people will ask for is like, well, where's the search button? So they search through all these options. There's not a search button. There's a little icon over here that kind of looks like a search thing, right? Right, that guy. But there's not an actual search button. So what we need for search, turns out, is actually just a text input. So we're gonna grab this text input. We'll drag it over here. We're gonna get rid of the default text. But I am gonna change the, uh, the hint text, right? And we're gonna put in, for the hint, we'll say, search on name, all right, make it easy for our users. Now, if you want to dress it up a little bit, right, we could then grab the search icon, drag him over here. You know, it turns out he doesn't actually do anything. But that's okay. We'll let him hang out, right? Let's put him right there. We'll put this guy here. Probably should have made this guy smaller. You get the idea, right? So now we have a search box, but it's really just a text input. So let's change this name here. We'll call this, uh, we'll call it search box since that's what we want it to be. And so the way that we're going to use search in this example is actually what you want to do is you want to go to your gallery here and see how items right now is just all of employee details. Well, what we want to do instead is we want to do a search. So we're going to say, hey, I want to search. What do I want to search using this function? We're going to use the employee details. What text do I want to use? So what text do I want to use in my search? Well, I want to use whatever they typed in the search box, right? So we're going to say search box dot text and then finally what column or columns we'll talk about that in a minute do we want to search and so i know that the person's name right now is in the title column for my list so we'll do that now we got a blue squiggly we'll talk about that in a few minutes let's ignore the blue squigglies for right now but with all that done let's hit play now one of the weird things about search sometimes when you do this is it doesn't exactly work the way you want until you kind of come over here and touch it, right? So I'm gonna type in some letters and then delete them out. And so now search will work fine. This is just a product of the builder. This is not something you need to account for in building your app. But so we have, here's our list. And so now if I search for, well, I don't have the title showing. It's another one of the nuances of building this. When we took the gallery, when we changed the items, it changed the layout for us. So click on title, subtitle, and body here. And so instead of compliant asset ID, let's change this back to title like we wanted. Yay. This is just one of the nuances. I, I purposely broke it this way so you could see it because it comes up often. Okay, so that all looks good. So let's hit play now. And so now if we start typing in Shane, there it is. Delete all that out. There's all my things. If I type in Peter, you know, I'm searching for uh, Greg's last name. If I type in R and E, I get both Greg Peter and one of my people's named Red Dash Blue. Don't ask. Um, but so you can see that we're actually getting what you were hoping, I think, right? A search functionality. Now, let's break it down though. Let's talk about some of the nuances of this and make it a little better. 
So right now what's really happening, right, is this search function is searching all of employee de details, so the entire employee details connection, it's searching the title column for the text here. And it just happens we're getting text out of a text box. We could have hard coded it, right? We could have said just like this, and it would do the same thing, right? There you go, it filtered it out. Click on gallery one again, but we don't wanna do that, right? We wanna have our nice uh, functionality. So search, oh, not search, search box dot text. So like that, okay? Now, and other things to understand though, it, it is using text. It is doing a case insensitive search, right? So whether I capitalize yes and chain or not, it's not gonna matter. So capitals, lowercase is not a big deal. Um, you can also do additional columns. So right now we're doing the title. If you just go right here past title and hit a comma again, all right, then we can search through here. And so maybe we we'll wanna search by department and by color. Oh, or favorite color, there you go. So like that, notice that the column names have quotes around them, that is on purpose, that is by design. And we still have the blue squiggly, but we're not ready to talk about that. So let's see, that looks good. Let's go over here, let's hit play. And so then now if I search for red, there you go, I'm searching from that field, but I can still search for Y-O-U, and I'm getting that one right, okay? So search is working as we had hoped. Also keep in mind here, I have sample data. You always wanna have sample data when you're learning about these things. It's a lot easier to work with galleries and searches and filters and that type of stuff if there's some data that's changing when you're pressing buttons. Okay, so then let's break down now, why do we get this blue squiggly? So this blue squiggly, right, if we hover over here, it, it's gonna tell you, part of this formula can't be evaluated due to service limitations. Blah, 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 blah. What it's really trying to tell you is that it's delegation. So the search function, what it wants to do is it wants to delegate its work. It wants to say, hey, data source out there, I need you to go through all your data, use this string, and find in there where it matches. Well, in this example, I'm using SharePoint. SharePoint does not, uh, the SharePoint data connection does not support that search uh, command. So instead, what has to happen is uh, Power Apps to try and make this as easy on us as possible. Power Apps goes out and gets the first 500 records out, records out of employee details, pulls them down, and then it does the search locally for me. So if I have less than 500 items in my list, no big deal, this works, things soldier on without issue. If I have more than 500 items, then this is not going to work, and then that is, um, it's just a sad panda kind of day. So, you know, Keep that in mind when you're building your solution. Search doesn't always work uh, because delegation only can do 500 items. Now, I've had to use search before for customer solutions, and so what I had to do is I had to go back and revisit my data. My data had, you know, I don't, let's call it 10,000 records in it. But what I figured out was that I could break it into 500 uh, records chunks, right? So instead of looking at all the project details, I first filtered by projects, so then each project had less than 500 items, and so then I was able to use my search commands uh, or functions without issue. So sometimes you just have to kind of think about your data in a slightly different way when delegation comes in. Now with delegation, I will tell you, and I'll leave a link down below, there is a great little article here about understanding delegation. You should probably read it five or six times. I think I'm, I've read it about 27, and I still don't really understand it all, all the time, but read it because it's very helpful based knowledge for you. And then if you click on the dele delegable data sources, easy for me to say, this is gonna show you the different data sources that we can delegate to, but there's a caveat to that. If you go down here, it'll tell you some of these functions, and for example, search, you'll see that SharePoint cannot delegate search, but SharePoint can do filter. So maybe in the next video, hint, hint, when we talk about uh, using the filter function instead of the search function, maybe filter is actually a better option for you because it can be delegated. So. These are the type of little nuances that as you guys start to build you know, real production power apps you need to be thinking about. So that's why things like this, I like to read these, I kind of put it in the back of my mind, and then hopefully you know, in three years when I trip over building a Salesforce solution for somebody, I will remember that average can't be deleg delegated for uh, that particular data connection. Who knows? Okay, so read, give those a good read, that'll help you with all those blue triangles. Some other things that I wanna make sure that you understand. When we're doing a search, um, what it is doing, it is returning a table. It is not returning text, right? So I can't grab this formula, right? Grab that. And so if we insert on our screen a label, and I do this all the time when I'm trying to figure out how things work, right? I'll throw a label on the screen, 
and I'll just replace this text with a function, see what happens, right? And it's like, hey, if I hover over it, it's going to tell me that, you know, oh, it's the whole delegation, but that's not the problem. If we go up here, the red error is this property expects text values, but the rules produce incompatible table values, right? Search is returning a table. So that's an important thing to note. Because where that also might come up, let's get rid of this, is if we insert a, um, something people have been asking me a lot about lately, a dropdown. Throw him over here, right? So we know that dropdowns want to show us items based on a, uh, a table. So that's kind of exciting. So we're like, oh, I can use search to drive that. So if we hit play here, what you're going to see though, is right now it's completely blank. Why is that? Because it's returning all of the columns. So search, right, our fancy little function here, returns all of the com columns from the employee details data source, right? There's like 27 of them. They all came back. The dropdown doesn't know how to deal with it. That's okay. We know how to deal with that, right? And so what we're going to do is we just do something like this, show columns. The show columns function takes a source, which is a table. Guess what our table is? A search result. Perfect. So then we'll just throw a comma out here on the end. What column name do I want to return? Let's return um, title. Title right there. So just like that. And then we will close this off. Now then let's hit play. And so right now my drop down shows all the choices. Oh, oh, oh. But if I type in Greg, now my drop down just shows Greg. If I type in RE, well, we're going to see everybody because that function returns everybody with RE. But if we type in red, we just get Shane and the person named red dash blue. Don't ask. Um, so that's an important thing to understand, right? Search returns tables. Tables not, might need a little love. And so the show columns function actually gives you that love you need. Pretty exciting stuff, huh? Yeah, I told you there'd be some neat little things to work, learn. So another thing that I want you to learn real quick, right? It's back to my gallery. And so you notice the blue squiggly line is only on the first item. It actually would be on all three, but the way that Power Apps does it, it just marks the first one and it quits marking. So like if I take title and get rid of it, boom, now it's marking department, right? And if I put title then back on the end, oh, got a capitalized title or it's not going to work. Right, it's still going to work that way. So that's important to understand also. You're not going to see the blue squiggly on all of them. Another gotcha, this is important for my SharePoint users. Okay, let's get rid of all of them because it's easier to test this type of stuff when you do all of them. Or you just have one column. So I have a column named look. And so look is a lookup column in SharePoint. With my sample data that I use to you know, do these demos or to answer questions on the forums and things like that, I just kind of have this one SharePoint list with a whole bunch of weird things about it, so I can always add it and test things. This is one of those. Lookup columns do not work with the search function at all. Period, zero, nothing. Now, right now, the error is the first function search has some invalid arguments. You're like, oh, well, that's okay. Someone once taught me I can do look or look dot value. Nope, same type of thing, right? Because look dot value doesn't exist, so it doesn't know what we mean there. I, I've tried every way. I've talked to some friends at Microsoft. As far as I can tell you guys, as of today, right, March 15th, 2018, lookup columns and the search function don't work together. Filter can do them. We're going to talk about filter uh, next time. But uh, search does not work with lookup columns. And just a little piece of friendly advice. You want some? Yeah. Uh, pay your taxes. No. Want a little piece of friendly advice? Lookup columns and Power Apps. They ain't friends. There's a lot of places where they kind of act a little different. So if you're building new solutions and you're using SharePoint as your data source and you're building new SharePoint lists, I know that lookup columns do a lot of fancy stuff, but I stay away from lookup columns. Instead, I'm using the Power Apps to wire everything together. It might not work for you. I'm not saying you have to go that route, but I'm just, right now, I just try to stay away from lookup columns. Your mileage might vary and it might get better, right? This is March 15, 2018. You're probably watching this video four years from now. If you are, leave me a comment. Say, ha, ah, it's four years now. Anyway, um, so that's important to note. Lookup columns do not work. And I named my lookup column look because I'm a weirdo. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is I want to go over here and I want to create a new app. So we'll say file, new. I'm going to make one from a SharePoint list, right? So SharePoint, and there's my crazy employee demos again. So we'll say connect. I don't want to save the one we just made. 
All right, 15 seconds later, SharePoint's done a lot of hard work for me. It built a lot of stuff. That's very kind of it. So let's go right here real quick. Let's change this browse gallery. We know that it's showing compliance ID, asset ID, and we do not want that. I don't even know what that is. Make it title. Okay, so this is just the out-of-the-box SharePoint app with that one little change. Now, if we do search and we start typing in Shane, what happens? Nothing. We get blank. This is causing a lot of people grief. That's why I wanted to point it out. So what, it, what you know now, right, is this isn't no magical search control. This is just a text input, okay? This little icon here is just there to be pretty. Got it. But what we do is we go to Browse Gallery 1, and we're going to see that in reality what's happening is they're doing a sort by columns and a filter. So a lot of times what happens is instead of cert, the search function, we'll use the filter function, especially with SharePoint because the filter function can be delegated. You can work on two thousand or uh, you know thousands of items and things like that because it all happens on the SharePoint side, not the little power app running on your phone. So in the next video, I'm going to break down how to work with the filter. I will give you the hint right now. That if you want to fix this problem that we are currently having, then let's get right here. We go whoop. We would just change this to title, and then I probably wouldn't sort on this. So we won't explain why that fixes it all, but you can see that now search works the way you expect. Pretty cool. There you go. All right. So uh, filter is the reason that search doesn't work. How confusing is that? And there is no search button. There is no filter button. They're just functions with uh, inputs. Okay, so I think that sums up everything I wanted to do today, right? It was an introduction to the search function. Hopefully it kind of gave you all the different pieces of information you need to use the search function successfully because I do end up using that one a lot. We talked a little bit about delegation. Um, and then finally we talked about our uh, friend filter because a lot of times we don't want search, we want filter. And for filter, there'll be a link below, but that will be, maybe there'll be a link way up there. I don't know. There'll be a link somewhere that will get you off to the filter video as soon as I make that in about a week or so. All right, thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. Just a reminder, if you don't mind, click the old subscribe button over here. That always helps me out. Or if you want to work together, you can always hit me up through the bold zebras. Or if really what you want is some more of these power app videos, which is probably what you want, then the playlist is somewhere on the screen here. All right, thanks. Have a great day.